Hello. This is a, a video for undergraduate second year students. It's multivariate calculus, critical points. Professor Oro in MIT 1802 goes through multivariate calculus in its totality. It's a very good course. His videos are excellent. I suggest if you are covering the multivariate calculus course, you watch his videos. I'm going to solve this problem, which is a bivariate fxy, only two variable, independent variables, x and y. So it's sort of like a quadratic type function. So let's see if we can solve this. We have to find the, essentially we have to find the maximum and minimum of this function, fxy. That's what we mean by critical points. So if I look at this function carefully, I can see that it can be rewritten in a sort of complete the square type idea like that. Well, this function x plus y squared plus 1 is always greater than equal to, not 0, it's always greater than equal to 1. Because that quantity is always greater than equal to 0, it's always a positive number. So, that is us solve this problem because that is the minimum value of that function. So we can see, and it occurs when x and y is minimum, and that's at the origin. So we can see that the minimum value of is f0, 0, and it's equal to 1. And that's the end of the problem. <laughs> so that was easy. No multivariate calculus really required. Oh yeah, um, maybe I should emphasize if I sketch this curve um, like that x, y, z, x, y, z. Um, oops. There we go again. About the origin. Then I'm going to get this sort of paraboloid type idea for the curve. Like that. Okay, so that minimum point of the, there's the contours. Okay. So this minimum point occurs at 1. Z, of course, is the value of the function on the xy plane. That's how we plot these least bivariate type problems. So that what that problem, as I said, is fairly easy. What isn't so easy, though, is if I change the plus y squared to minus y squared. And I can't do that trick that I've done before. Now, now I have to use the proper second derivative test that Mr. Oro explains and derives clearly from his YouTube videos, from the MIT videos. But, okay, so what do we have to do here? We have to determine what the critical points are, and they are defined by f of x is equal to f of y is defined identically so equal to zero and that's what critical points are now these critical points could be maximum or minimum in the case of multivariate calculus it can be like saddle points the shape of a saddle um, or there can be something else <laughs> that we don't know so the something else we don't know are called degenerates um, so for instance if you have a function like that um, like this sort of thing. And say so you have a, a sort of U looking tube like that. Like that. So along the X direction, there's this U tube. So the function doesn't vary as we increase one of the parameters, for instance. Then that's what would be called a degenerate set of lines. Okay, but we're not really worried about uh, that particular problem at the moment. So let's go back to our original problem, which is solving this. So let's work out what f of x is. So a partial, part, these are partial differentials. So differentiate this function with respect to x, and I get 2x, y squared, y is held constant, that disappears. The 2yx becomes plus 2y and the one just disappears. So that's a partial of that function with respect to x. And that's equal to zero. 
Well, that's the same as 2x plus y is equal to 0. Then we do f of y. And f of y is minus 2y plus 2x is equal to 0. Or 2 times x minus y is equal to 0. So these are two simultaneous equations that pertain to our critical point. Now in solving this, we have the solution to this is x is equal to plus y and minus y at the same time. So that can only be, a number can only equal to positive negative or another number if both numbers are actually equal to zero. So the only critical point here we have is zero, zero. That is at the origin. Okay. So that's for critical point F00. Zero, zero. But we don't know its nature and we have to determine its nature. So we go back and using so the critical point is at the origin. We find out what Fxx is and that is this what this is this const this AC minus BC squared, just like quadratics, we, in a sense, we call it the discriminant. So the discriminant here, I have to find FXX. So I differentiate this with respect to X, and I just get the number 2. And then I differentiate, I have to find FXY, which is the same as FYX. Okay, That means that D of the function dx dy is the same as the differential of a function dy dx. It's identically equal to it, okay? So we don't, we only have to work out one of these. So let's differentiate this with respect to x, because it's fyx. So that's just plus 2 there, okay? So that's fyx, or fxy, I'll just leave it like that. And we need fyy as well. So it's the differential of this with respect to y, and that's just minus 2. So these are my ABCs. So, at, um, yeah. so at, the, at the origin, my AC minus B squared, there's A. Okay, so let's make sure you know that. that's A. This guy is B. And this guy is C, and that's what goes into the formula here to determine the nature of the function, whether it's a, a minimum or a maximum or a saddle. We also have to take into account the sign of A itself. So in this case, A is greater than zero, so A is positive. So this is 2 times minus 2 is minus 4, minus for b squared, which is b squared is 4. So it's minus 4 minus 4, which is equal to minus 8. So because it's less than 0, the discriminant is less than 0, this is our solution here, this chap here, in this particular case. So I confuse people. So get rid of that. So here we're talking about a negative discriminant in our sense. This guy. So it's a saddle point. So that means F00 is a saddle point. Saddle for this function. Okay. So, what does it sort of look like <laughs> um, in my little graph? Well, let me just rub all this out for the moment. So, it's... That's where the x, y, z axis. So, there's my x... And there's my y, and there is my z, which is the value of the function itself, of course, bivariate function. 
Now, when x is, when y, sorry, is equal to zero, I have x squared plus one. So on the x, on the z plane, the function does that. Okay. And it's got a minimum value of one down there. Like that at that point. So that's us looking in the xz plane. When x is zero, I have one minus y squared. So what does that look like? Well, that's just simply like that. Okay, so here we're looking in the xy plane uh, with x equal to zero and it cuts through that point there. So that's why it's a saddle point. So um, I don't want to really be sketching much more of this. So what does the function look like in general? It's, it's not too easy to, to do this sort of thing. It's looking much like that, okay? Um, it's much like that. I think that's right. Um, roughly like that. So you really have to plot these uh, in uh, a graphics package or something to to see what exactly is is happening. And of course we have these lines contours if you like are doing that and uh, that here. So. Anyway, I hope you can see that there's a saddle point at the, at the origin. So thank you, and remember, go see, watch Mr. O'Rourke's uh, videos in the MIT 1802 site, and please visit my TomCTutor.com, the maths uh, page on this, TomCTutor.com, that's me. <laughs> the, if you like my videos, uh, please subscribe. Um, any comments down below and uh, thumbs up of course <laughs> so see you again bye